Hello all, I will do a little video now on the solutions to the trig functions and equations. So here you can see the question that a few people stumbled on in quizzes etc where I've highlighted it's an obtuse angle in orange and you can see that it tells us given sine x is equal to 3 over 4 so I drew my triangle in purple so then I used Pythagoras here to find the missing side of the right angled triangle then remembering my cast diagram or the unit circle you know that it's an obtuse angle so the angle is going to be in here somewhere so you've got to find the obtuse angle and not the acute angle which when you use cos it's adjacent over hypotenuse so if I know that that's root 7 over 4 in the acute angle over on the other side it's going to be negative root 7 over 4 so that gets you 4 marks and for the second part, for three marks, I use the formula, the double angle rule, one minus two sine squared x is equal to cos two x. And then I just used the number that was already given to me. The reason why I chose that one is because here it's given to me, so I know it's right 100%, whereas I could have got the answer in A wrong. So anyways, put that in and I don't need to do anything with this, just calculate it and it automatically gives me a negative, so it's negative 1 over 8. On to question 2, which was pretty straightforward, hopefully everyone's going to get full marks for this. It says, a nice easy function, 3 sine and then brackets pi x close bracket write down the amplitude well the amplitude is 3 why because the amplitude is the number which is multiplied by the trig function so in this case it's 3 so I've explained that that a is the amplitude here then it says find the period well there's a formula you need to remember period is equal to 2 pi divided by b so b we know is pi because it tells us here so therefore 2 pi divided by pi is going to give us 2. Then on to c it's a four mark question but if you don't look at the domain you can you can lose marks so I've emphasized in orange what the domain is it's 0 and 3 and I've drawn my graph um, precisely to that so you can see here that it starts at 0, goes up to 3, all the way down to negative 3, and then back up to 2, which is one cycle, because I calculated that in part B, and then I kept going to 3, because that's the domain. On to the trig equation, which... You can see I was looking for seven answers. So six mark question, no calculate. I was looking for seven answers. So if you multiplied the whole equation by cos x, but before that, to pick up some easy marks, you just had to change tan x into sine x over cos x. And you just had to change sine 2x into 2 sine x cos x. So these were easy marks to pick up at the beginning. Then multiply by cos x here, which eliminates the fraction. So that cancels out this cos x. And then it turns this cos x into cos squared x. So I end up with sine x minus 2 sine x cos squared x. That's a squared if you can't see it equals zero. Then I'm not going to rearrange it and then cancel out because I want to find as many possible angles as I can. So I'm going to factorize because I can see a common factor of sine. So sine x bracket one minus two 
cos squared x because I factorised. Then using the null factor law, which we've talked about this many times, if you've got two things multiplied together which equals zero, you can split them. So sine x equals zero. Well, you just need to remember the sine graph. It goes up, down, and back up. So there's three points where it's zero. Zero, 180, 360. And then on to the tricky bit where some of you lose marks because you always forget that when you do the square root, you've got plus and minus. So that means you're going to have cos x equals 1 over root 2 and cos x equals negative 1 over root 2. And then you're tested to use your cast diagram correctly where if it's positive, you would use all and cos because it's cos. However, if it's negative, you're going to use the sine and tan. So I get, you can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven answers. On to calculator questions. It says the depth of water in a port is modelled by, so it gives us a function, it gives us the domain, it tells us that t is the number of hours after the high tide. So at high tide, it's telling me the depth is 9.7. Well, from here, you got to look, it's a cos function, and you don't know what p is yet, so you need to figure out whether it's positive or negative before you draw your graph. So 9.7 is the high tide, the low tide is 5.3, so subtract them, divide by 2, that gives me 2.2. So that means that the cos function up here starts at the high tide, then it goes all the way down to the low tide, which is 5.3, so really my curve should have went to there should have came to here and then it should go back up like that um, and the tricky bit is knowing that the the period is 14 because it tells you that low tide which is seven hours later so starts at zero Seven, seven hours after high tide, it's the low tide, down at the minimum, seven hours. And six is half of 12, but it's seven. If you double seven, you're going to get 14. So that means it goes all the way back up to the high tide at 14. So we know that one period was 14. So that gives us a value of Q, which is 2 pi over 14. So therefore, pi over 7. Then use the model to find the depth. So... You could either put this into your GDC and show me evidence from the GDC that you've done it, or just plug it into the formula. So all I did was put 10 in for t and just pop that into the calculator and you get 7.01 to three significant figures. Very easy if you just use the GDC. Again here, just using the GDC, just testing your knowledge on that. So you can put the function in to the GDC and then just analyze it, or you can just sub it into the formula. So when t is equal to three, you get 50 centimeters. What's the, am well, the amplitude is 30. You can see it here. The vertical shift is 80. So if the amplitude's 30, then the minimum must be minus 30 plus the vertical shift, which is minus 30 plus 80, which gives me the new minimum after the vertical shift, which is 50 also. But again, if you show me GDC evidence, that's fine. And then find the first time after release that the string is 70. Well, again, GDC, but this time you need to put in 70 because you're trying to find an x coordinate. So 70 is the y coordinate. So you should get a horizontal line going across your graph. And you just need to find the first intersection point with the graph in the horizontal line. 
when y is equal to 70. And then when you analyze your graph, you get 0 0.608. You could have drawn, drawn a sketch or again, GDC picture evidence. Now, calculator, again, last question, three marks. It says the height, and that gives you the Ferris wheel function, so you would just enter that in. Be careful that it's a negative this time, so you can see on my graph down below that it starts at um, 1.5, goes all the way up to the maximum height, and then the Ferris wheel goes back to the, the beginning at, after one cycle. So it says, given that the passengers only complete one rotation on the Ferris wheel, how long will they have to take unobstructed photographs when they go above the trees? Well, it says that it's 30 meters. So we need to do the same thing as we did in part B of the last question. We enter Y is equal to 30. But this time we want to find two intersection points because anything under this area is above the trees. So from this time to this time gives you the final answer when you subtract them of 6.74 seconds. So the Ferris wheel is above 30 meters for 6.74 seconds. Okay, I hope this has been helpful for you in checking your mistakes and feedback when I enter your scores onto ManageBit.